The Cheetah was designed to be a fast-moving astrometric powerhouse capable of scanning, decrypting, and disseminating both environmental and combat intelligence as quickly as possible, and was intended to be used to support both combat scouting operations and the search for new pockets of resources for the Thucker tribe to exploit in the Great Wildlands. The Cheetah is one of the most capable covert ops vessels in the cluster. How the Thucker tribe came to possess intricate details of cloaking technology so soon after the collapse of the Korea Lair project has been a point of conflict between the state and the Republic since the vessel first became public knowledge. According to Thucker Mix, the technology was acquired legitimately after a former Korea Lair scientist was recruited by the Thucker tribe to assist in its development. The Kaldari state and the Ishikone Corporation, however, continue to deny this position and claimed that Thucker Mix acquired the technology via black market trading with the Guristus Pirates. Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzi and in this video I want to share with you my love for the Minmata Republic's Cheetah. This is a vessel that I just adore so much. I love the way it looks, I love the way it flies, I enjoy the kind of content you can do with it, whether that's combat scanning, whether that's probing down wormholes and mapping those, whether it's hacking and exploration, a lot of cool stuff you can do with this ship. I love the backstory behind it. You heard me talking about the Creole Air project a moment ago. That's from the Frigates of Eve Online book, which is well worth checking out if you're interested in the backstory specifically of the different frigates in Eve Online. Like, I know that sounds a really niche topic, but there's so much good stuff in there. I do recommend you check it out. But the question really is, why do I love this ship to the point that it's something I even have merchandise for? The Lucid Echo, the exact ship you see on screen now, is a ship I use so much that I decided I wanted to design myself a hoodie and a cap that I could wear whilst walking around in real life, and it is available on my Redbubble merchandise store, if that sounds like the thing you might be interested in too. But I want to talk with you all about what makes this ship special to me, I'm going to showcase how I fit it, and talk about how I run it. So, without further ado then, I reckon we should just jump right in. So let's actually talk about the Cheetah itself, and that's going to bring us to the Minmata Republic tech tree. So, coming into this, first of all, we know that we have the Probe down in the Tech 1 frigates. The Cheetah is an upgraded version of the Probe, so if you've been flying this, the Cheetah is kind of your next step, I guess, if, you're, if that's the kind of content you're enjoying, if you're using the Probe and having fun with it, the Cheetah is probably the next option for you. In between that, you might decide to go for, say, the Probe Fleet Issue. I will talk about the Fleet Issue Explorers, uh, Fleet Navy Issue Explorers, in a future video. That's outside the scope of today. Day. But if we come up the Tech 2 branch here, we eventually get the Covert Ops ships and the Cheetah. These are Omega level ships, you do need to have Omega on your account in order to use them. In my opinion, they're pretty worth it though, like it's not necessary, I know a lot of people who still do, and myself included, do a lot of the activities I do with the Cheetah still in a standard probe, but if you want the abilities that the Cheetah explicitly has, yeah, this is a beautiful little ship exactly for those purposes. What am I actually talking about? Well, if we go into the traits, the main thing that makes the Cheetah different from the Probe is its Covert Ops abilities, as you'd expect for a Covert Ops frigate, right? It's the ability to use that Covert Ops cloaking device. And what really is the difference there? Well, first of all, the Covert Ops cloaking device allows you to warp whilst cloaked. That itself is huge. You can scan down a site and you can warp into it and no one knows you're there. This works both ways. If you're going into a hacking site and you think there might be an Astero there or someone waiting for you, you can come in cloaked and kind of look around and assess the situation first. If you want to go combat scanning, you don't even necessarily need to combat scan. Like, if you're in a wormhole and you know that there's a load of different combat sites that are more than 14.3 AUs away from your entry point, then currently you're off the D-scan for those. You can then cloak up and warp into each of those different combat anomalies or relic sites or gas sites or whatever at range so that you don't lose anything and you're completely cloaked. They don't see you arrive on grid. If you're in a standard probe or whatever, you're going to have to warp in and then cloak when you're there, which means obviously they're going to see you walk in, right? I lost a Tengu this way last week when a guy in a buzzard managed to do exactly that to me, just lucked out, warped into a combat site that was 14, more than 14.3 AU away from where he had entered the wormhole, and I just happened to be ratting in it. So he sat there, he waited, and he flew as close as he could to me without dropping his cloak, parked next to my MTU, and the second that I arrived to loot, 
his entire fleet warped to zero on his position, which was pretty much at zero for me. Locked me in, down I go kind of thing. That's the power of a Covert Ops cloak, and ultimately, it does come with some downsides. Notably that if we're looking at the Cheetah here, it only has a 200 cubic meter cargo hold, whereas the Probe has a 400 cubic meter cargo hold. That does make a big difference. It means if you're using this for Relic and Data Site running, um, then you're gonna have to come back sooner. It means if you wanna use this as a hauler, it can't carry as much as the Probe can. And yeah, I get that, you know, oh, but if you're hauling, wouldn't you wanna use something like a Wreath or a Prowler? Yeah, but not everyone has those skills trained, right? A lot of us do use the uh, the exploration frigates as cheap little haulers, and the cheetah, whilst it has the ability to get through a gate camp so much easier, doesn't have as much cargo space. That's the trade-off, and I love the fact that there are trade-offs in this kind of thing. But let's have a look at its stat bonuses then. So we first of all have a covert ops bonus, so training the covert ops skill. Each level gives you a 20% reduction in cloaking device CPU requirement. Having this trained to level 5 means your cloaking devices don't touch your CPU, which is huge. Really, really huge. If you're going to be flying one of these, you want that Covert Ops trained right up to five as quickly as possible so you can cram as much other juicy stuff into your CPU. We get a 10% bonus to core and combat scanner probe strength, 50% at full training. That's pretty big as well. It means you're going to find it easier to scan down different sites or enemy ships or whatever it is you're scanning down. You've got better sensor strengths on those, therefore they can lock down faster. 10% reduction in time required for survey probe scans. This is one that I think a lot of people really underestimate. That 50% reduction in scan time is huge. It means if you want to drop your core scanner probes and map a wormhole, you can do it significantly faster in this ship than you can other things. And it may not seem like much at first, but I promise you, run a covert ops frigate for a couple of weeks and then go back to using a standard frigate and or any other ship that doesn't have that uh, scan bonus. And you will notice the difference and it, it, it becomes horrific. Um, it also means that if you're combat scanning, for example, yeah, you are going to be dropping your co uh, combat scanner probes, and the less time that those are in space trying to zoom in on a target, the better. So the fact that they scan faster and have higher strength means you can lock down a target faster, and thus hopefully you don't spook him with D-scan. You manage to get those probes down, lock him into position, and then scoop the probes quickly, warp into position without him having been uh, spooked. Minmatar Frigate, because of course this is a Minmatar Frigate, this gives us bonuses per skill level, 5% bonus to maximum velocity when using cloaking devices, so whilst this ship is cloaked it gets a 25% speed increase, which is huge because cloaks drop your natural speed and you can't use an afterburner or a micro warp drive whilst cloaked, though you can activate it then cloak and still get the bonus, which is pretty cool and useful for running gate camps, etc. But that 25% speed there is really, really useful. It means like if you liked that example of warping into an anomaly whilst cloaked and you see someone in the distance, you can close that gap all the faster so that your friends can warp in at zero on you and grab that ship super quick and super easy. It also means that if you're in a relic and data site and you're trying to move around cloaked because you know you're being hunted, you can actually move between the cans whilst cloaked and it's not awful. There's all kinds of stuff that that works for and it again is a really useful skill. And not all of the Covert Ops frigates have this. The Cheetah and I think the Helios? Is it the Helios or the Anathema? It's one of those two gets this bonus as well and it is so useful. Then we get a 15% reduction to warp drive capacitor need, 75% reduction at full training there. Um, again, just makes it easier to warp away if you're muted or you know, you're not sitting on full capacitor, that kind of thing. Always quite nice to have. It means you don't have to sort of double jump across Thera, for example. Finally, that roll bonus there to 10% uh, 10, bo 10 plus bonus, sorry, 10 point bonus to Relic and Data Analyzer Virus Strength is going to help you crack those uh, hacking containers and archaeology containers that little bit easier. Really nice. Can fit Covert Ops cloaking devices and Covert Sinusural Field Generators. We'll talk more about uh, Covert Sinusural Field Generators in a future video when I cover Sinos properly. Um, again, the fact that it can use that is really useful for certain fleet warfare. And the cloak reactivation delay reduced to 5 seconds. Oh no, someone decloaked me! Oh well, it's only 5 seconds before I can cloak up again. Sometimes that's all the time you need. 
Looking at its attributes though, we mentioned earlier, compared to the probe, it only has a 200 cubic meter cargo hold, down to from a 400 cubic meter cargo hold. It also can't fit drones like the probe can. Although I'll be completely honest, I have never once used drones out of a probe. No, that's a lie I have once, just to kill some mining rats when I was using a probe to go mining, but goodness me, that's a niche use right there. Why were you mining in a in a probe, Ben? Um, because ultimately, it, I had one of those missions where, you know, the daily missions to do a little bit of ore mining, and I couldn't be bothered to train the mining skill any higher or grab a venture, so I just fitted a mining laser to a probe and out I went. Rats appeared, drop a drone, and boom. You're good. But again, super niche, right? When, when otherwise are you using drones? If you're using drones in a probe or something, please tell me what I'm missing here. Because exploration has been my thing in EVE Online for the longest time. And outside of that one hyper niche situation, I've never used them. I, I guess if you're using like the fleet issue or navy issue versions, maybe? But I, I don't know. I really don't know. But anyway, that's the cheater. Compared to the probe, it gives you that covert ops functionality at the cost of cargo. It is ultimately better at scanning. It's better at hacking. It just has to dock up a little bit faster and it doesn't get the salvage duration bonus either, I suppose, that the probe standard gets. So if you're wanting to use it for salvaging for whatever reason, it's not as good. Although in fairness, if you're salvaging, you know, the, the thrasher is, is right there. You don't even need to have the Minmatar Destroyer bonuses, just Minmatar Destroyer 1 to be able to undock it with a full set of uh, salvages in the top slots. That's all you need. But anyway, we are digressing. So let's talk about how I personally fit my cheetah, the Lucid Echo. And I'm going to say that again, how I personally fit it. Your mileage may vary on this because I might have different goals in mind to what you're looking for. And of course, my skills that I've got trained to whatever level I've got them trained to are going to affect things as well. Now, for the purposes of this fit, essentially I use the Lucid Echo to go around and map wormholes. That's what I'm mainly doing with this thing. Mapping down different wormhole sites, adding it all into Tripwire for my corporation to understand what kind of content there is around us. I do occasionally run relic or data sites on this as well, the safe versions, so I do hacking and archaeology, just to get myself a bit of isk on the side. That's kind of how I get my paycheck, in inverted commas, as a wormhole mapper. I kind of get first dibs on those combat sites. Beyond that, I do occasionally use this for running uh, combat runs as well. I will go combat scanning with this to nail down a target, move in close while cloaked and provide that beacon basically for my friends to warp to zero at. That does require a slight modification of this exact fit, but well, let's talk about that. So the top slots here in the high slots, Sister's Core Probe Launcher. Now, this is a core probe launcher at the moment because I'm trying to keep the fit as cheap as possible. If I go combat scanning, or I think I might be in a situation where I might want to quickly swap to combat scanning, then I often use an expanded probe launcher, obviously the Sisters expanded probe launcher. I go for Sisters over the standard stuff because it gives me higher uh, base sensor strength. That base sensor strength allows me to nail down a target just that little bit quicker. When I'm mapping a wormhole, I want to be able to nail down every single one of those sites, bookmark everything quickly, add it all to tripwire quickly so I can move through and get on with the rest of my day. I want to be able to quickly and effectively provide a mapping service in as short a time as possible. So that strength allows me to get that done faster. Ultimately, it's worth the additional cost for me. You might find that with, with the skills I've got, I can actually run out there with standard core scanner probes and a standard core probe launcher one and still be able to get everything. I just want to be able to do it that little bit faster, hence I use the sisters. Because we have a cheetah, it's a covert ops ship. I think honestly, if you're undocking this without a covert ops cloaking device on it, I honestly think, and this may be controversial to say, but you're doing it wrong. Like, why would you fly a Covert Ops frigate and not use a Covert Ops cloaking device? This is the main reason to fly this particular ship. And absolutely, that ability to warp whilst cloaked is huge. It means you can, if someone jumps in on you, you can quickly cloak up, move off to a distance, and then warp as quickly as possible without them locking you. It means that you can land on grid with someone, they don't know you're there. I've already explained the advantages of a covert ops cloaking device, I'm not going to do it against here. Now the top slot here, if you're following my content from Eve Echoes, is something you've never heard of before in your life. It's an interdiction nullifier. You land in a gate camp inside an interdiction sphere, you need to warp away quickly. 
you click the button here and you can just do it. This lasts a few seconds and it gives you the ability to just ignore the fact that, that you are inside an interdiction sphere. Whether that is from a heavy interdiction cruiser or whether it's been dropped out the front of an interdiction destroyer, you can just pretend that bubble doesn't exist. Super powerful. Like, there have been times, genuinely, if you look through my Zed kill board, I lost a cheater the other day because I was playing whilst ridiculously tired. I completely forgot I even had the interdiction nullifier fitted. I tried to micro warp drive out of the bubble. They then locked me and scrammed me before I could warp away. The interdiction nullifier, it's an I win button against interdiction spheres. And again, if your ship can fit it, which not every ship can, this is a lifesaver. This thing has allowed me to survive gate camps throughout Nullsec, throughout wormhole systems, and just laugh while I'm going. Occasionally I forget it exists and I do lose a ship, but that's me being an idiot. That's not the any problems with the nullifier. And ultimately I would always go for an interdiction nullifier one. There are advantages sometimes to using the two, but this one has the shorter reactivation bonus, which means if you accidentally warp out of one bubble straight into another one, it's fewer seconds until you can actually use it again to get out of that one. Really, really worth it in my opinion. And what else are you going to put in that high slot? A salvager? What are you, flying a probe? In the mid slots, four mid slots on this bad boy, we have a Relic Analyzer 2 and a Data Analyzer 2. You could theoretically drop in a Zoigma or something here, an Integrated Analyzer for a little bit of extra, but that massively increases the cost of the ship. And considering I'm running in hostile territory most of the time, it's just not worth that additional cost in my opinion. Data Analyzer 2, Relic Analyzer 2, more than enough to open all of those boxes with no real issues. Again, does depend on your skills, but that's more than enough for me. Now, the fourth slot, and yes, I'm skipping the third, 5 Mega Newton YT-8 Compact Micro Warp Drive. I can fit a Micro Warp Drive 2 here, but the YT-8 is a little bit cheaper for me. Does exactly what I need it to do. Quick bursts of speed. When I arrive in a wormhole system, I will often double-click in space, um, activate the Micro Warp Drive, drop the probes, and then immediately hit the cloak. And I do all three of those in a very short period of time. It means I'm essentially moving for one cycle of the Micro Warp Drive, at f you know, and getting that bonus to this uh, flight velocity, I'm cloaked up and my probes are already out for me to start scanning, so I can start drifting away from the wormhole, thus it's less likely someone's going to drop in and decloak me. Ultimately, that's pretty much the only real use for the micro warp drive. You can say, oh, you use it to burn out of bubbles, but that's what the interdiction nullifies for. Now, the cargo scanner here, this final mid slot, this is a bit of a mix one. I use a cargo scanner too when I am going relic and data hunting, because, or just mapping a wormhole and I might be running some hacking sites as well, because it allows me to pick the containers that are actually worth spending time on. When you're in nullsec or in uh, wormhole space, in JSpace, you kind of be able to want to know what is in the containers. Are they worth spending those few moments hacking into when your attention is off other bits of the screen and you could be jumped? It's, it sucks to basically sit there and spend ages hacking something only to find that it's it's carbon. Like, who cares? Move on to something better. This sometimes does get swapped out for one of the different arrays. Often the pinpointing one there just to, you know, get again a little bit faster in on different targets, up that scan strength a little bit to move in faster. But most of the time it's the cargo scanner because again, I use those relic and data sites to give myself a bit of income whilst mapping wormholes. But again, this one does genuinely shift out for different modules depending on the situation. Now the low slots, this is where things become very, very personal, because remember, due to how server ticks work in EVE Online, essentially you always need to be just under a number. There is no difference between an align time of 3.9 seconds and 3.0 seconds. Uh, sorry, 3.01 seconds. Those are both a 4 second align time. If it's over 3.0 and under 4.0, it is a 4 second align time. Ultimately, I've got this down to an align time here, we can see of 2.9, this means I warp in 3 seconds. And I've done this using uh, 2 nanofiber internal structure 2s and 2 inertial stabilizer 2s, just to get that warp time down. Again, you could go for something like a damage control in here, if you can't quite get yourself sub 3 for example, um, and you just sit there and go, right, okay, well it's going to be a 4 second align time, I'm just going to deal with that. If adding, you know, if two low slots gets you that far, but four doesn't get you across the next hurdle, then yeah, you can add things like damage controls here, or you can keep the slots empty to keep the ship cheap. It's up to you which way you go about that. I tend to just plug in damage controls for, because for some reason I'm swimming in a load of IFFAs, but 
for this particular ship, I can get myself to a sub three align time, which is so super useful. Now, finally then we have rigs. In order to fit everything here, I do need a small ancillary current router just to cram everything in. Helps me just stabilize things there. And we have a small gravity capacitor upgrade too. This is, you can see, it uses my full cohesion here in order to do this. Calibration, sorry, not cohesion. It um, uses my full calibration in order to do that. You, I've seen some people just go for two gravity capacitor upgrade ones there, but I need that extra power grid from this. So going for the better version here allows me to get that big bonus to my uh, sensor strength. Again, allows me to nail down targets a little bit faster. And you can see, it's a pretty solid ship. Sub three second align time, I'm getting a scan strength of 129, which goes up to 138 if I swap out the cargo scanner for the array. It's a solid little vessel. The main concept here though is completely that if someone comes in in a combat situation, if I'm hacking or scanning or whatever, and someone does jump and land next to me, I'm not gonna try and fight. I'm not gonna try anything clever. I'm just gonna warp the hell away as fast as I can at that point. I run. This is not. <laughs> this is this is not one of those ships. You know that you, you fly if you feel like someone's going to think you're a coward for running. You bunny rabbit away. You jackrabbit the second someone appears on grid with you. If you think there is any risk at all that they might actually decloak you, or if you're not cloaked, and obviously you just run. You just leave whatever you're doing and you run. Unfortunately, no drones to worry about there either. And that's it. That's the vessel. I love this thing. It's fast, it's small, it's sneaky. It allows me to do some really, really nasty stuff in PvP. And in PvE, it allows me to find sites, map them quickly, and scan through those hacking, you know, hack through those uh, relic and data sites really quickly as well for a little bit of ISC on the side. And that's it. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below as well. If you are running one of the Covert Ops frigates, which one's your favourite? I do have a soft spot for the Buzzard as well. I think that can be a really interesting ship to run. Does have some notable advantages and disadvantages compared to the Cheetah, mainly in the case of fewer low slots, more mid slots. But the Cheetah for me is just the one that I enjoy the most. Yeah, you can get some slightly better stats in some ways from some of the others, but I love the way this ship looks. I love the colors, I love the design, I love the silhouette, I love the lore, everything about it. To the point that, as I said, I even have a hat and a hoodie with the Lucid Echo logo on it um, that I designed just for myself. If you fancy grabbing one of those, it's on my Red Bubble merchandise store with a load of other stuff as well, but honestly, my merch store is more about just me creating designs that I sell to myself than more than anything else. If anyone else enjoys it, then awesome, but otherwise, yeah. So let me know your thoughts and opinions. Thank you for watching right the way through to the end, folks. Please hit subscribe for more content like this if you haven't already. Otherwise, happy sailing and see you in New Eden.